Today, dear friends, we journey to the early church in a period of widespread persecution and have an especially uplifting martyrdom two-for-one special. This story involves new mothers, a birthday party, a juicy diary, and would you believe, a mad cow. Grab a snack and a beverage and get comfortable because this is why Saints Perpetua and Felicity are two dead Christians you should know about. Perpetua and Felicity were young women living in Carthage, North Africa, in what is now Tunisia, around the turn of the third century. Perpetua was a well-educated noblewoman whose mother was a Christian, but her father was a pagan. Felicity was her slave. In 203, Perpetua, a 22-year-old new mother, made the decision to renounce her pagan upbringing and profess her faith in Jesus by becoming a catechumen in the church. Quick vocabulary lesson. Catechumen is a fancy Latin word to refer to a student in the Christian faith who is preparing for baptism. Early in the church, people who wanted to be baptized received lengthy formal instruction in the Christian faith before being baptized as a group, generally at the Easter Vigil. Becoming a catechumen almost certainly meant a death sentence for Perpetua, as this was during a period of open persecution of Christians. Upon hearing the proclamation, Perpetua's pagan papa pleaded to persuade her from the plan, but she responded by pointing to a nearby water jug and asked her father if he could call it by any other name than what it is. Of course he could not. That would be a lie. And neither could she call herself anything other than what she was, a Christian. Shortly after this conversation, Perpetua was baptized. Perpetua reports in her diary that the Lord spoke to her during her baptism and instructed her to pray for nothing but endurance in the face of trials. Obvious foreshadowing alert. Interestingly, at this time, Christianity was already sort of legal in Carthage, and the city had a thriving Christian community. But since we're telling the story in a video series about martyrs, you might have already guessed that something changed. And change it did. While Christianity wasn't exactly outlawed, in 201, Emperor Septimus Severus made it illegal for anyone who wasn't born in the faith from becoming a Christian. It took two years for the governor of Carthage to get around to enforcing that edict. But when he did, in 203, Perpetua, Felicity, and two other female companions were arrested along with their instructor in the Christian faith, Sartorus, who chose to be arrested with them. The conditions in the prison were hot, dark, and overcrowded. Guards often abused and mistreated the prisoners. Two deacons from the Carthage church were so worried about the horrendous conditions that they paid for Perpetua's group to be moved to a better part of the prison. While she was held in this area, Perpetua's mother and brother were able to bring her baby to her. Eventually, she was able to get permission for her baby to stay with her in prison. With her baby by her side, Perpetua said her prison turned into a palace. When Perpetua and her group were examined and sentenced in court, her father was there and begged her to recant and save her life. Even the judge, seeing her with her new baby, took pity on her and personally asked her to change her mind about the whole conversion business. Perpetua refused and was sentenced to be thrown to the wild beasts, along with a number of other Christian companions who had been arrested around the same time. Sometime after this, Perpetua had a dream where she saw a golden ladder reaching up to heaven with swords and daggers on the sides and a large dragon at the bottom. The only way to climb it was while looking up toward heaven. As she stood there, she saw her teacher Sartorus climb up it first and when he got to the top, he told her he would wait for her, but to be careful that the dragon at the bottom didn't bite her. She replied that in the name of Jesus, it wouldn't touch her. As she spoke the name of Jesus, the dragon put its head down. When she reached the top of the ladder, she saw a beautiful garden and a tall man dressed like a shepherd milking sheep. The man handed her some of the curds from the sheep's milk and said to her, "'Thou art welcome, my child.' As she ate, everyone around her said, Amen. Perpetua understood from this dream to mean that she would have to suffer for the sake of Christ. More foreshadowing. Now, Felicity. 
We don't know much about Felicity, other than she was Perpetua's slave and eight months pregnant at the time of the women's arrest. Fortunately for her, it was illegal to execute pregnant women. Even the pagan Romans considered it shameful to shed the innocent blood of unborn babies. So it would seem that Felicity had a temporary reprieve. But Felicity knew she would be martyred anyway as soon as the baby was born and hoped to at least die alongside her brothers and sisters in Christ and worried that they might be executed before the baby was born. Some of the guards were amazed at the strength and peace of this group of Christians. The warden of the prison was so moved by their courage that he allowed them to have visitors and even became a Christian later himself. Other guards were simply spooked by the Christians and were afraid they would cast spells on them. Felicity went into labor two days before their scheduled execution as part of the military games celebrating the Emperor Severus's birthday. During her contractions, the prison guards mocked Felicity, saying that her labor pains were nothing compared to what she would soon experience when she was fed to the beasts. Felicity gave birth to a healthy baby girl who was adopted by a Christian woman in Carthage. When the day came for their execution, the Christian converts calmly and joyfully entered the arena. The women watched as the men in their group were fed to bears, leopards, and wild boars. Next, the women were stripped naked and had a rabid cow set on them. In a strange plot twist, the crowd did not respond well to watching the women being attacked in this way and yelled they'd had enough. The semi-trampled women were brought out of the arena, clothed again, and put back into the arena, where they faced off against armed and trained gladiators. Before her death, Perpetua called out to the Christians in the crowd, saying, Stand firm in the faith. Love one another. Don't let our sufferings be a stumbling block to you. Perpetua and Felicity stood next to each other and were killed by the same strike of the sword. Perpetua was a well-educated noblewoman, whereas Felicity was a slave girl. Despite these differences, they shared in one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, so were united as sisters in Christ and met martyrdom together. What we do know about their imprisonment and martyrdom comes from a diary kept during that time by Perpetua herself and finished after her death by a fellow prisoner. The women were venerated as saints in the early church and are celebrated on March 7th. They are the patron saints of mothers, ranchers, butchers, and Carthage. And that's why Perpetua and Felicity are two dead Christians you should know about. Lacking the ease of Twitter to share news amongst each other and certainly seeking to honor and remember those faithful who had been martyred, the passion of saints Perpetua and Felicity was regularly read in many of the early churches. Perpetua's diary is one of the oldest Christian texts in existence and one of the oldest manuscripts in history that was written by a woman. Something to keep in mind with your journaling exercises. Thank you for watching Dead Christians You Should Know About. Dead Christians is a publication of Higher Things Incorporated. All research, writing, and recording for this episode was done by me, Ellie Coro, with video animation by George Borghart IV, illustration by Jessica Jacoby, and executive production by Sandra Madden. For more information about Dead Christians You Should Know About or Higher Things, visit our website at higherthings.org.